I, um, I just can't believe all you people out there. I think I've been lost in the Kosciuszko National Park for far too long. <laughs> and that I really uh, lived in regional New South Wales and have very few other bush regenerators ever to talk to. So my work principally is to um, restore the former construction sites of the Snowy Hydro Scheme in the Kosciuszko National Park. There's about 400 sites. Uh, some of them are really, really big and really, really hard. They go from Alpine down to Montaigne. Um, they're a result of the construction of the scheme. And it was really nice to see that list of plants from that wetland. I don't deal with any wetlands, by the way. Um, <coughs> just because with the Snowy Hydro Scheme, there was never any real records. There was never any surveys done of what was there before the scheme, of either animals, plants, landscapes, even photos. There's very few photos of the Snowy River, the Tumut River, the Jiha River, before they were dammed. And um, there's 16 dams, eight power stations, about 40 um, kilometres of tunnel, about 90 kilometres of aqueduct. So the soil disturbance was massive. And um, this site is just one site. It's quite low, it's about 1,000 metres in altitude above sea level. Sites prior to work. So look, this is just one site and that's how much rock spoil we used. Uh, moved all of this, just billions of tonnes of rock, the hardest granites in the world, from the middle of the Kosciuszko Mountains, the Snowy Mountains. And I, you I take my hat off to the tenacity of the people that did this project because they did it with dynamite, bulldozers and picks and shovels, pretty much. And, but they left behind such a huge legacy as far as the hydro scheme and how that changed Australia, but also environmentally. All of our largest rivers at the top of our catchment are dammed and, um, and they are changed in it forever. We will never get these wild rivers back again. And that's something that I have to deal with on a daily... We not only deal with our sites, but we have to deal with um, threatened species, weeds, um, you know, flows, working with snowy hydro, trying to get environmental water back, all that sort of stuff. So I won't go through all those points because I don't have time but that's the sort of the scope of my work. So one of the things we do on our big sites is we get engineers involved and we get, get big excavators and uh, bulldozers involved and we reshape. And the principal goals are to reduce angles, to break up batters and to get oxygen back into the ground. And I am quite envious of all you people that talk about soil <laughs> because <laughs> I have no soil, none. No soil to grow anything. So. One of the things I've had to do, and anyway, I'll talk about the earthworks a bit more. The earthworks are major. They are like 45 tonne, 50 tonne excavators. We have to work out how to get these over 20 tonne loaded bridges. So just with everything we do, there are logistics. Logistics, logistics. We use a lot of helicopters to do a lot of carting of things. Um, and we also, so that was like at 38 degrees, that slope. We've got it back to about 27. Still very steep. Still very difficult to work in. Biologically dead, pretty much. Not much going on at all. So um, one of the things that I have really developed is uh, to create compost. And because I live in Tumut and uh, work around Tumbarumba, they have harvested 60,000 hectares of alpine ash in the last sort of 100 years. And a byproduct of that is a lot of sawdust. So there's mountains and mountains of sawdust around Tumbarumba and Tumut. So they didn't want it. It was a free so, um, source of um, material. So I said, well, look, we'll cart it off your site. And I started working with CSIRO and we came up with a beautiful um, recipe for making compost out of sawdust and wood chip. And it's proven to be really successful. And so far, I've made about 10,000 cubes of compost for this project out of a completely um, you know, recyclable product in a way or an organic product. So my approach really is to throw organics at these sites, just as much as I can get in. So compost, plants, seed, uh, wood thatch, straw, wood chip, everything. But we're talking a lot of money. This project was costed at $155 million to repair. We ended up getting $32 million. It's a 20-year rehab project. It's a very exciting project to work on. But I find, like, once I, I get stuck in Kosciuszko National Park mm -hmm. and I cannot... I don't really have many colleagues and so it's really inspiring for me to come and hear all these great talks. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway... <laughs> um, so that's just a rundown. I mean, what Nigel said about, you know, the passengers and the, and the drivers. Well, I just use the drivers, pretty much. I throw every plant. I use ecosystems around it. I look at post-fire events. I look at post-disturbance events. What is coming up? What works? 
if you get if you start to understand natural systems and you work in a natural system for a long time, it becomes part of your life. It becomes, you know what's going on. I completely understand Aboriginal people and how they get landscapes because I get them too. If they're suffering, I suffer. And if they're really thriving, I thrive. And so it's very inspirational. I think it's the work of the future. Rehab is the work of the future if we're going to survive as a species. <laughs> God, that was, um, with, I use LFA, Landscape Function Analysis, which is a transect line down a slope. So, you know, this is only one year after we've done the rehab. So, and we've got other sites where we've got heaps of threatened species have moved in. We've got, we're creating habitat for the southern corroboree frog, for the mountain pygmy possum. We're really doing a lot of work to try and augment natural process and to protect national parks because that's what they're there for, to protect the ecosystems. They're not there just for tourism, as our governments may tell you. <laughs> anyway, so lessons learned. One of the things about this site is we could not, a lot of my sites I have to put fences up or I use a lot of tree guards because the grazing is shocking. We have rabbits, hares, wallabies, wombats, kangaroos, horses, deer, you know, everything. And they all love these rehab sites. It's like planting a delicatessen for them. <laughs> I just walk up the line and so I've had so many sites where you don't do the, the plant protection and you come back a week later and they're all eaten. Yeah. So I love building a big fence because you just get all this biomass. It's fantastic. So on this one, this one hasn't grown as well as what I would have liked because a big kangaroo or big families of kangaroos really like this site. But it's still getting there and now I think that they're really starting to have something to do with the ecosystem and its development as well. So that's just a snapshot of my work in Kosciuszko and if anyone ever wants to come to Kosciuszko National Park and see this work, you're all very welcome because it's really exciting work but it's really tucked away you know, up in our high mountains and not many people know about it. So thank you very much. Thank you.